Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning. We ask that you will click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. In Pam Lilly's book, Merry Mornings, Martha Day, she says we must stop, drop, and roll. We must stop our minds from racing out of control. Stop and acknowledge God in the fact that he is in control. He has a perfect plan for our day. Then we need to drop the notion that we know what's best for us. We need to drop our agenda and exchange it for God's agenda. Finally, she says we need to roll our cares on Jesus, knowing that he cares for us. During this pandemic of COVID-19 and other issues that we are, have going on in our lives, we have a lot of anxieties. We need to carry our anxieties, our burdens to the Lord. Pam Lilly says Jesus wants us to bring our burdens to him and let him carry them. Jesus wants to work out the solution for us. Our scripture comes from Psalm 55, 22 and 23. And it reads, give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. But you, O oh God, will send the wicked down to the pit of destruction. Murderers and liars will die young, but I am trusting you to save me. Our song says, leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If the world from you withhold of its silver and gold and you have to get along with meager fare, just remember in his word how he feeds the little bird. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If the world from you withhold of its silver and its gold and you have to get along with me Just remember in his word how he feeds the little bird. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your Hey! 
Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. Lord, we thank you for this privilege of prayer. Lord, we've been unfaithful, but you've been faithful. Lord, we have been sinful, but you've been sinless. And we thank you for this privilege of coming before you. Now, Lord, Father God, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Bless us, Father God, that we will walk with you and that we will hold close to you, Father God. Lord, we ask you to bless us in this day, that we will hear your word and that your word will speak clearly to us, that your word will go forward, Father God, and that your word, Father God, will be made better in our lives and we will be made the better because of your word. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that you are God and you are God alone. We ask you to bless us now as we spend this time with you. We ask you to speak to us today, Father God, through your word. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God again for another privilege to come on a Sunday morning and worship him. Yes. This is the day that the Lord has made and we ought to be glad and rejoice in it. We ought to be glad in the Lord. And certainly every day is the day of the Lord and we ought to rejoice in the Lord every day. Sunday is God's high day. Sunday is the Christian's high day. So we come today on the Christian's high day to give God some glory, Amen. some honor, and some praise for what he has already done in our lives. Amen. And what he's doing right now. Right. Let me call your attention to the book of St. Luke chapter 4. The book is St. Luke in the New Testament. The book is St. Luke, the chapter is four. And today we will we'll arrive at verses five through eight. St. Luke chapter four, verses five through eight. St. Luke chapter four, verses five through eight. When you found it, you will discover these words. <clears throat> then the devil taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you in their glory, for this has been given, delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me and will be your and all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. My focal point today, verses seven and eight. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, get behind me, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. I want to talk about the temptation of authority. The temptation of authority. On last week, we dealt with Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, and we spoke to your hearts concerning the subject, 
temptation of allegiance. The devil tempts Jesus in the wilderness as he was after with a hunger. He tipped him in the wilderness because he was hungry. Jesus had not eaten for 40 days and he was hungry. Jesus being God, Jesus being man, the man side of Jesus was hungry. And because Jesus was hungry, the devil tempted him right where he was physically weak. So he says in this temptation of, of allegiance on last week, I said to you that uh, the devil will always, always tempt you in the area of your allegiance to God your loyalty, your commitment, and whatever you hold superior is at stake. The devil has a way of tempting you in your allegiance. Look at how he starts to talking. He says, if you be the son of God. In other words, if you be who you say you are, if you be who your followers say you are, then I tell you what, since you're hungry, Turn this stone, Matthew which says in King James, turn these stones into bread. New King James here says, turn this stone into bread. He, he says, whatever you do, since you think that you are the king that you are, since you think that you, you are the son of God, since other folk believe that you are the son of God, and that I know that you're hungry, what you do is take these stones and turn into bread. So he tempts Jesus in the area of his identity. He tempts Jesus in the area of his allegiance. <laughs> Jesus, the son of God, Jesus, the, the second person in the Trinity, Jesus, God himself was tempted. I want to tell you on today that <laughs> you're going to be tempted also. You're not so holy, you're not so com completely sold out for God that you, are, you can just ride on a bed of Eve. I'm going to tell you today that regardless of who you are, regardless of ho how holy you are, you are going to be tempted. We can't talk about anybody else. We can't talk about the temptations that others fall into because it's just a matter of time before we fall in to similar temptations. Yes, it is the temptation today. I talked to you about the temptation of authority. Have you ever wondered why people want to want to be in a highly echelon position? Have you ever wondered why people wanted to want to always be known as one who has great authority? It is it is the same thing that James talk about in I mean John talks about in First John chapter two verse sixteen. I told you on last week in this spiritual walk, and John confirms it in First John chapter two verse sixteen. In this spiritual walk that we have, we will always be tempted. Amen. Let me tell you, temptation knows your address. Temptation knows your Twitter account. Temptation knows where you live and temptation knows what you like. Temptation is all around us and temptation will always challenge God's authority and the authority that God has given us. In the text, Luke chapter four, verses five through eight, you will find the devil. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. The devil is the false accuser. The devil is the one who is slandering us. It is the devil. Flip Wilson would say, the devil made me do it. Let me just share with you, the devil is running rapid. He is the God of this world. He is the God of this atmosphere. But the devil has limitations. He is not the almighty God. When we look at the text, we find not only do, does Luke record 
this particular temptation in reverse order from Matthew. As you look at Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, you will find that Matthew records this particular uh, temptation in reverse order from the last one that Luke records. The Bible says in chapter, chapter 4 of Luke, verse number 5, the devil comes and he takes him up on a high mountain. He takes his Jesus. He, he, he leads Jesus up on a high mountain. He leads him up on a high mountain and he shows him the kingdoms of this world. Let me just share with you that the devil, the devil is always trying to tempt us in lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Yeah. On last week, he tempted, he tempted Jesus by lust of the flesh. He said, since you're hungry, since you haven't eaten, take this stone and turn this stone into bread so you can have something to eat. Mm -hmm. That was lust of the flesh because the flesh wants food. The flesh wants something to eat. So he tempts him and he tempts him at the moment where he's weak. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, the devil is a rascal. The devil is something else. The devil is really busy because the devil is always trying to tempt you at the moment that you're at your weakest point. See, the devil doesn't play fair. The devil doesn't play fair. The devil will take a small child and use that child. The devil will kill off a helpless child. The yes. devil doesn't play fair. That's right. The devil is not in just a raffling match with us. The devil is out to kill, to steal, and destroy. The devil is out to get us. The devil is out to, to lead us until up in a high mountain. He takes him up. He takes Jesus up on an exceeding high mountain, and he shows him the kingdom. Uh, King James would say he shows him the great wonders of this world. He shows him the kingdom. He, he takes him up, and he shows him all the kingdoms of this world. He shows him, the devil gives him a snapshot of every kingdom, the Bible says, in a moment's notice. In a short period of time, this, this word moment, uh, moment, moment means that, that he shows it to him instantly. He shows him a snapshot in a, in a point in time. He, he shows Jesus all of these kingdoms in an instance. Let me tell you, the devil wants want you to see stuff that you can have in a moment's notice. The devil paints a picture. He, now we find ourselves in the midst of the lust of the eye. It's what you see. The Bible says in, in Genesis that, that Miss Eve saw it and that it looked good. You see, the devil never tempts us in any area other than these three areas. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. So today we deal with the lust of the eye. Be careful what you look at too long. Brother said the other day, well, I, I, can't, I can't help if a sister passed by me that gets my eye. And a woman said, oh, you can't help if she passes by you and she gets your eye, but you can't help how long you, you look at her, right. how long you see her, and, and how long you stare at her. He, he, he had to understand that, that lust will be all around us. And the devil paints a picture, and he brings that picture right before our eyes. In the text, the devil takes Jesus up to an exceeding high mountain, and in a moment, in, in a snapshot, in an instance, in a point of time, he shows him the kingdoms of the world in a moment's notice. Then the devil tests his authority. He tests his authority. He tempts him in the area of authority. And he says to Jesus, the devil says, verse number six, the devil says to Jesus, all of this authority I will give you and the glory that comes along with it. Be careful. The authority that you get, who you get it from, and how you go by getting it. I want to say to you today that, that you can have authority 
and God has no, pro no problem with you having authority. But be careful how you gain authority. Be careful from which authority comes. Be careful from whom you gain your authority. He says to us, he says, he says to us today that the devil will not only take Jesus up and show him a bunch of stuff, show him the kingdoms of this world. Let me just share you, share with you, he will show it to us also. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm saying to you today, young man, young man, be careful how the devil show you around. Yes. Be careful how the devil takes you on a tour. Young girl, be careful how the devil allows you to get rich quick. Be careful how, how the devil will put you in a, a position where you got to lie to stay there, where you got to give up your body to keep there. You, you got to be careful how the devil will put you up and show you from an extremely high mountain all the kingdoms of this world. What temptation is the devil able to get out on you? <laughs> what temptation is the devil able to pull you into? What temptation is the devil able to, to keep you focused on so much so, so until he questions your authority, the authority that you have in God? He says he shows him, takes him up on an extremely high mountain and shows him the kingdoms of the world in a moment's notice. The devil says to him, now this is the kicker. The devil says to him in verse number six, Luke chapter four, the devil says, and the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory. Yes. He says, I, I will give you the authority and I will give you the glory. There's always something you're going to have to pay for something. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, if you get rich quick, you're going to have to pay for it. And when you get rich quick, sooner or later, it will lose, it will, you will lose it quickly. It will escape from you quickly. That's why I tell young boys and young girls, whatever you do, get an honest, decent paying job. Get a job where you have to work. Get a job where you can get paid. Get a job by which you can be delivered into sanity. Right. <laughs> because the devil will offer you some things. The devil will get you somewhere. The devil will take you places that you thought you would never go. But when you get there, it's going to cost you more than you can afford to pay. That's what the devil does. The devil, the devil will take you where you thought you could never go. The devil will make you stay longer than you can afford to stay. And the devil will make you pay more than you can afford to pay. The devil has a way of pulling at us. He, he, is, he is the accuser of the brethren. The devil is, is the one who, who, who accuses us and slander us. The devil is the one who falsely uh, quote the scripture. It's the devil. Look at, look at the devil. Look at the devil. Verse, verse number six, Luke chapter four. And this authority I, I give, I will give you. Now he's giving Jesus, a, telling Jesus he will give him authority when he don't have authority. He says, this authority I will give to you, and not only will I give you the authority, I will give you the glory that comes with it. He shows him a picture. He paints a picture before his eyes, and he says to him, I will give you the authority, and I give you the glory that comes with it. See, a lot of people want, want authority because they know that this authority comes with glory. Men always want to have glory. Let me tell you, it's dangerous mm. to have glory. It is dangerous. It is, it is dangerous to have an authority in such a way that you have glory because God wants the glory. When you look at Acts chapter 12, you will find that, that Herod stood up on a great day. Herod stood up and gave a great speech on a certain day. He gave a great oration on a certain day. Herod came up, he gave a speech, and the people heard him speaking and said, this is not the voice of a man, it's the voice of a God. They gave him glory. The Bible declares that while they were giving him glory, he did not shut down the glory and he did not give the glory to God. Right. The Bible says that after he gave a great speech and the people said that this is the voice of a God and not a voice of a man, the Bible says the worms ate up his flesh 
and he gave up the ghost, meaning he dropped dead, because he did not give God the glory. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, my dears, we better give God the glory. Amen. We, we need to honor God with all we have. We need to honor God with where we, we've been. We need to honor God with how we do things. We need to honor God and remind other people that it's not me, it is of God. And it ought not be cliché-ish. Yes. You ought to really honor God with your heart. You ought to really honor God with your substance. The devil, the devil takes Jesus up to exceeding high mountain, shows him the kingdoms of the world. Too, too often, we as preachers get caught up on the kingdoms of this world. Let me tell you, God has shut us down with the kingdoms of this world. He has shut our kingdoms down. Great buildings we built. Great group of people we have brought together. And God has shut it all down. I mean, we've been able to, to, to move and do great things in the community. We've been able to, to move and to, to do things that, that we never thought we can accomplish. But if we don't give God the glory, God knows how to shut it down. That's right. We can build our own kingdoms if we want to. We can do what we want to do the way we want to do it if we want to. We better be careful and give God the glory because yeah. God deserves the glory. Amen. The, devil, the devil says to Jesus, he says, he says to Jesus, all this authority I will give you in the glory that goes with it. He says, it has been delivered to me. He says, it's been given to me. The devil, the devil wants you to think that he has all power. That's right. The devil wants you to think that he's able to give you anything that you want. The devil wants you to think that you can have glory and keep the glory. But let me tell you something. The way God operates, suffering comes, then comes the glory. Mm -hmm. The cross comes, then comes the crown. When you look at it from a devil standpoint, the devil gives you the glory, then the suffering comes. Uh, yeah, yeah, when, you, when you're caught in sin, when you're moving around in sin, let me tell you, it's a good thing. You feel good. You, it looks good. Sin has a way of painting a good picture that you're on top of the mountain, that you're in the middle of the kingdom, and you have all the glory that goes with it. But that glory that is offered by the devil, it comes with great pain, and it comes with great suffering says to Jesus, he says, it's been delivered unto me. This authority to give you this has been delivered to me. And I give it to whomever I wish. Verse number six. Now, the other day, my wife asked me, how do you know that 50 minus five is lying? I said to her, because his mouth is moving. She says, but are you saying that every time he opens his mouth, he lied? I said to her that even while his mouth is beginning to part, he's lying. The devil here tells Jesus a falsehood. He tells Jesus a lie. He tells Jesus that it has been delivered unto him the right to give Jesus the authority and give, he can give it to anybody he wants to. But what he's doing is he's taking the glory of God and using it for his own reasons. He's taking the, the authority that God will give to Jesus after the resurrection. And what he does here, he tries to paint a picture that the glory that God will give unto Jesus after the resurrection, the devil says, I can give it to you now. Let me tell you, young people, don't take what the devil is giving you now because it is temporary. That's right. It is temporal. It is short-lived. It is not of God. What you need to do is wait on the Lord. <laughs> That's right. Isaiah would say it like this. He says in Isaiah 40, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not fall out. Wait on the Lord, I say. Wait on the Lord. 
Whatever you do, don't, don't get in a hurry. Don't let the devil give you what you want. Don't let the get, devil give you counterfeit stuff that you've been praying for. Many times the devil will give us that which is counterfeit, and we think it is of God. We can pray for the right person. We can pray for the right thing. We can pray for the right house. We can pray for the right God. Don't let the devil give you stuff and you think it's of God. Yes. I say to you today, don't buy what the Joneses buy just to hang out with the Joneses. If it doesn't line up on your budget, leave it alone. If it's not what God has delivered unto you, don't take it because the devil is delivering unto you. You better watch how you hang out, watch who you hang out with, watch who you spend your time with, because the devil has somebody that's just your style. But you need to wait on God. I say to young people, whatever you do, don't get in a hurry to have your mate. You need to be working for the Lord. If you're running for the Lord over here, and he or she is running for the Lord over there, then the Lord has a way of making sure that you understand that the world is round and he will bring you together. Keep on teaching, keep on preaching, keep on missioning, keep on working for the Lord and the Lord will bring forth a happy ending. The way the Lord works, suffering comes before the glory. You see, there's some things that the devil offer. The devil offers deceit. The devil offers lies. The devil offers half-truths. The devil offers false authority. The devil offers false worship. The devil even offers confusion. And most of all, the devil offers shortcuts. You see, he's trying to shortcut the cross. He, he's trying to shortcut Calvary. He's trying to make sure that Jesus doesn't make it to Calvary. So what he does is he offers Jesus glory. He offers Jesus authority in Luke chapter 15. He offers him authority. He tempts him in the area of authority. He says, all these kingdoms, I give unto you if you just bow down and worship. See what he says. He says in, in verse number seven, he's, he says to us, I will give you all these things. And not only is he saying to Jesus, he's saying it to us. He says, I will give you all these things. In verse number seven of, of Luke chapter four, verse number seven, he says, therefore, if you will worship before me and will be, it all will be yours. He said, therefore, if you worship before me, all of these kingdoms and all the glory that it comes with will be yours. Yes. He says, if you bow down and worship me, he said, if you bow down, the devil wants you to bow down and worship him. You see, he wants to be as God. He, he really wants to be God. And whenever somebody wants to take your place, they will always tell those who are listening who they are. There's a song that, that I used to hear when I was growing up, and it's not a Christian song either. It says, smile in your face. All the time they want to take your place. Backstabbers. Somebody's heard it. Somebody has sang it. All the time they want to take your place. They smile in your face. The devil has a way of smiling in our face, yeah. not just because he won't want to take our place. He wants to take the place of our God. Mm -hmm. The devil wants to be like God. He wants to be every place at the same time, but he can't do it. He wants to be able to have all power. He wants to have all glory, but he can't do it. The God we serve is omnipresent. He's all places at the same time. When it comes to the devil, he's not all places. He got a hitchhiker ride. Somebody's church this morning, the devil hitchhiker ride to got there. <laughs> he got there by hitchhiking. The devil is a parasite. The devil wants to catch hold over your cocktail. The devil wants to ride in your mind. The devil is trying to hitchhike because he's not omnipresent like God is. God it's all places at the same time. Everywhere God moves, he bumps into himself. He is omnipresent. When he's headed to the east, he's headed to the west. When he's headed to the north, he's headed to the south. He is all places at one time. He is omnipresent. He is our God. Yes. 
Not only is he omnipresent, he's omniscient. He knows everything. He knows how to handle everything. He sees everything. And he sees how we are handling things. The devil is not, he's not all-knowing. The devil has to listen in on your conversation. The devil has to listen in. He he working through your mind. He 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 is he is working through our hearts. He he's worship he's work he's work working through our deeds. Yes. The devil he he doesn't know everything like God. God yes. is all knowing. He knows what we're thinking before we thought it. He is all knowing God. The devil is not the sovereign God. He, he wants to be as God. The devil, the devil wants to be as God. He wants to be God. He is, he, he is not sovereign. He, he, the devil can't do what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, the way he wants to do it, with whom he chooses to do it. Yes. Even when the devil wants to mess with us, he got to ask God permission. Job would tell you, Job would tell you that I was minding my own business. I was offering prayers up for my children. I, I was a, a righteous man in the land of Ur. I made sure that my riches, I gave some of that back to the Lord. I walked with God. I prayed before God. I kept my children before God. I honored God. And the devil went and asked God, can he have permission to mess with me? Matter of fact, the devil was walking around to and fro. And God confronted the devil and said, have you considered my servant Job? Say said, no, I, I haven't considered your servant Job because you got a hedge of protection around him. You won't let me touch Job. And God gave him a little more permission and a little more permission. And then God said, you can't kill him. Yes. <laughs> the devil says, says to God that he'll curse you to your face. Mm -hmm. Job said, though he slay me, yes. yet will I trust. Amen. He is not sovereign. He doesn't have all power. God is omnipotent. Yes, Lord. He has all power. He has all authority. He is God. The God we serve has all power. The God we serve is the same God who stepped out on nothing in the midst of nowhere with all authority where darkness was upon the deep and said, let there be light and light came zigzagging through the universe. Because he is God. Look at the devil. Look at the devil in Luke chapter 4, verse number 7, how he talks to Jesus. He says, therefore, if you would worship me, therefore, if you would bow down before me, therefore, if you would worship me, all will be yours. Now, he's trying to give Jesus what Jesus already owns. Yes, he is trying to give Jesus what God is going to give him authority over anyway. Let me tell you, don't let anybody sell you your own car. Yes. Don't let anybody sell you a house you already own. That's what the devil is trying to do to Jesus. And he's trying to do it to us. And he's doing it to us every day. The devil is taking your own stuff, your own mind, your own body, and he's selling it back to you. Don't be tricked by the devil. Yes. The devil wants you to worship him. The devil, have you ever seen a person, you ever, ever seen, have you ever, have you ever seen a person who just got to have accolades? Somebody that's got to be told that you're doing good. Have you ever seen a person that, that, that got to be thanked for every little thing? Have you ever seen a person before in your life when there's a raging pandemic wants the governors to say thank you for doing the job you ought to be doing? Let me tell you, you need to make sure that you understand it's the devil at work. That's right. The devil. The devil wants to, wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And most of all, the devil wants you to bow down and worship him. Give him accolades. He wants you to worship him. And he tells Jesus, all this can be yours if you worship me. If you give me the glory, if you worship me, I will give all these things over to you because they've been delivered unto me. He wants the devil, Satan, the accuser of the brother, want you to really believe that he's running things. He wants you to really believe that, that he can bypass Congress, 
The devil wants you to really believe that he can offset anything that he's not pleased with. God holds the devil at bay. God has all authority. God is all powerful. God is omnipresent. God is all knowing. God is sovereign. And we ought to worship that God who is Amen. sovereign. Verse number eight. And I'll leave you alone. Luke chapter four, verse number eight. It says, and Jesus said, Jesus answered and said to him, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Jesus makes the same statement to Peter when Peter was talking to Jesus. Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, because Satan is not worthy of being in front of him. Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, because God is the only one we ought to worship. Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. In other words, get out of my face, Satan. Matter of fact, Satan, give me more than 50 feet. Matter of fact, Satan, leave me alone because you're not going to have the victory. Yeah. We got to get to a point in our lives where we tell Satan, get behind me. We, we got to be wise enough to see Satan and not the person. We must be wise enough to talk to the devil and let him know I see you. I, I see what you're trying to do, Satan, and I ain't going for it today. You got to get up in the morning talking to the Lord and asking the Lord to lead you, to guide you. Every minute, every hour, every second of the day, Lord, lead God and protect me as I travel this narrow way. Lord, lead me and guide me. And Satan is behind me and not in front of me. Amen. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. You might as well go and do, do your business somewhere else, Satan, because I, I'm not answering you that way. Mm -hmm. You remember the Hebrew boys, don't you, how... King Nebuchadnezzar says, when, when this music played, you bow down and worship this image. And if you don't bow down and worship this image, let me tell you what's going to happen. What's going to happen is you're going to be thrown into a hot, fiery furnace. Now I'm going to play this music one more time. And if you don't bow down, then I'm going to throw you into the hot, fiery furnace. They didn't bow down. Matter of fact, they said that, that I, matter of fact, what they said is, we are not careful to answer you that way, old king. He said, you can go ahead and play your music. Play your music any way you want to, as long as you want to. We are not going to bow down. Yes. The good thing about the Hebrew boys is that they didn't have a meeting to discuss whether or not they're going to bow down. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to ask one or the other, are you going to bow or am I going to bow? They had it together because they trusted in Almighty God. We have to get to a point where we get to a point where we trust Almighty God, regardless of how tough the situation gets, regardless of how hot the fire gets. We got to come to a point where we trust God and God alone. Amen. Jesus says, verse number eight, Jesus answered and said to him, get behind me, Satan. For it is written, I told you on last week, you got to remind the devil what God has said. And you have to bring God's words before God. When we pray, we ought to pray the word of God. God, your word says that all things work together for me. <laughs> for those of us who are called according to your purpose, your, Lord, your word says that all things work together for me. For those who love you, Lord, your word says, Lord, we ought to pray the word. And not only that, we ought to pray over the word. As we read the word, as we digest the word, as we study the word, we ought to ask God to bless the word to come up in us and make this word alive in us. Lord, I've just read that the devil, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God, I know that you have come, that we have life and have life more abundantly. Lord, thank you for your word. So Jesus answered and said to him, he says in verse number eight of Luke chapter four, he says, get behind me, devil. Then he says that, 
that, that you shall worship the Lord God and him only shall you serve. On oh, last week, Jesus quoted the scripture of the Old Testament writer Moses in Deuteronomy 8 and 3 to the devil. Well, the devil comes back this week with the same old kind of shenanigan, comes from a different angle. And then Jesus quotes scripture to him from Deuteronomy chapter 16 and chapter 6 and verse number 13. He quotes chapter 6, verse number 13 of Deuteronomy this week to let Jesus, to let the devil know, Jesus lets the devil know that you shall worship the Lord your God and him alone shall you serve. Now, that text does not mention service, but Jesus paints a picture to us, and he says to us, if you find yourself worshiping, then you will find yourself serving. What Jesus says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13, it talks about the fact that we ought to worship God, we ought to honor God, we ought to glorify God, but then he comes back and he says, Make sure that you serve God and God alone. Yes. What Jesus is saying to us, if you find yourself worshiping one, you will also find yourself serving one. Mm -hmm. And we ought to serve God. We ought to worship God and God alone. The problem with us is we don't know the word in order to quote the word. We have to make sure that we learn the word. We have to digest the word. We need to re-digest the word. We need to read the word and reread the word. We ought to saturate ourselves with the word of God. Yes. Psalmist says, your word have I, have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. The idea here is that if we, we saturate ourselves with the word, if we study the word, if we digest the word, we, we meditate on the word, sin won't be on our plate. Yes. He says, I, 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 the, the word has entered into my heart. Your word has been entered into my heart. And because your word has entered into my heart, I don't sin. Mm -hmm. He says, the word is what we ought to stand for. Yes. The word is what we ought to quote. The word is how we ought to, ought to let people know that we are Christians. It's by the word. We ought to study the word. We ought to live the word. We ought to speak the word. It's the word of God that makes us strong. Amen. It's not man's words. It's God's word. Yes. It's not our words. It's God's word. That's why the men of God ought to preach the word of God. If we preach the word of God, the word of God is what delivers us from all our ways. The word of God will make us fall out with our evil ways. The word of God will, will make us turn our back on our sin. The word of God will strengthen us in such a manner until God is able to use us and we will worship him and we will serve him. Don't you want to worship him today? Don't you want to serve him today? Don't you want a, the authority to be given to you through God himself and not through the devil? This is a temptation of authority. And all of us will be tempted by way of authority. The devil wants you to keep God's glory. Let me tell you, leave God's glory alone and honor him. Bow down and worship God. If you don't know, if you don't know how to worship him, you need to be saved. You need to be born again. If you don't know this God we're talking about, you need to get to know him. I introduce him to you today. He is the God that took his son, Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. He gave Jesus and Jesus gave his life on a skull hill called Calvary. He gave Jesus the Christ. He gave his life on a skull hill called Calvary. Yes. Jesus died a voluntary death. He died, I tell you, on an old rugged cross. You see, the devil was trying to short circuit. The devil was trying to give him a shortcut. The devil was trying to get rid of Jesus and make sure that Jesus did not go to the cross. 
because he knew if Jesus got to the cross, it was victory for all mankind. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Jesus the Christ died, I tell you, on an old rugged cross. They killed my Lord. They killed your God on an old rugged cross on a skull hill called Calvary. He died, I tell you, on that hill that day. He died. They took him off the cross, laid him in a barber tomb. They laid my Lord and your God in a barber tomb. Out of that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. If you're here today and you don't believe the story, let me just tell you, you need to get to know the story. You need to know that Jesus is the son of God, that he died for your sins. He rose from the dead. And if you can believe that story today, you can be saved right here, right now. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You need to come to Jesus just as you are. I hear you. You're saying, preacher, I messed up. I've fallen short. I've not been pleasing to the Lord. I want to tell you today I messed up. I've fallen short. I've not done those things that are pleasing to the Lord. But one day I had to invite him into my life. And I asked him to come into my life and make me a new person. All I had to do is believe the story. That Jesus is the son of God. And out of obedience unto God, he gave his life as a ransom for you and me. Jesus gave his life. He died on a skull hill. He was buried in a barbed tomb. But early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. The Bible tells me in John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. The Bible tells me in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. The Bible tells me in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. The Bible tells me in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, that if I believe this story, that Jesus is the Son of God, and that he died for my sins, the Bible tells me I can be saved. Regardless of what I've done, regardless of what I've been through, I can be saved right here, right now. Will you bow your head with me and invite Jesus Christ into your life to be your Savior and to be your Lord? Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. Make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe that you're now born again. You need to be a part of a good Bible teaching church. And I recommend this one, the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the main attraction, where Jesus is the captain of the ship, where Jesus is the one who we focus on, for he's the center of our attention. If you receive Christ today, please inbox me and let me know so we can rejoice with you. If you need a church home, inbox me and let me know and we will welcome you to the New Beginning Church. If you need prayer, inbox us. And let us know that you need prayer. We'll be glad to pray with you and pray for you. God bless you and God keep you as our prayer. It is now offering time. It's time for us to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's a great time to give. A time when we're not meeting, we can't stop giving. A time when we're not hugging and fellowshipping is still a good time to give. 
people. We're giving based on our relationship and fellowship with God. We don't tithe because we're in a building. We tithe because we have a right relationship, a right fellowship with God. We must continue to give unto the Lord. I want to thank those who've been giving and those who are continuing to give even in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of the time that we have away from, from church. You can continue to give. You can give by way of Cash App. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. NBC Souls. You can give by way of our Cash App. Cash tag NBC Souls. You can give them by way of Zelle. Our Zelle email address is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is the Zelle account. Or you can give and mail your offering in to the New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 Please continue to give and thank you who have been giving. Thank you for so much for continuing to give during these times. Again, you can join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school. Please join us on, on Facebook Live at 9 a.m. Sunday school. And also you can join us at 1045 by way of Zoom and also by way of Facebook Live every Sunday at 9 at, at 1045. 1045 a.m. for our worship service. Thank you for joining this service on today. We're here every Sunday, same time, 1045 a.m. for worship service. And you can also join us on Wednesday night at 720. Wednesday night, 7.20 p.m. Wednesday night, you can join us right here for our Bible study. Please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to follow us on Facebook Live and share this recording with your family members and friends, with your contact. Share this broadcast, and we'll be glad to, to fellowship with you. We look forward to meeting you again and spending time with you again and being a part of service with you again. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you that Jesus has the ultimate authority. We thank you, Lord, that the devil has no authority when compared to Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that we are not going for the camouflage. We're not going for the counterfeit. We're not going for the false and the unreal. We're going to stick with Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that Jesus have the authority to make life well. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus has blessed us, has saved us our souls, have made us whole. We thank you for what he is doing in our lives. We thank you for the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, how he rests, rules, and abide with us. Now, Lord, bless us to always be conscious of the fact that we must remember what is written. Bless us to know that the glory goes to God. Bless us to be reminded, Lord, that Jesus has paid it all on Calvary and all to him we owe. Though our sins were as scarlet, he has washed us whiter than snow. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world 
as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.